Hey everyone, it's Anders from Baking Steel Company. Today we've got some dough from Whole Foods. And the dough is pretty good, but with a little bit of work, we're gonna make it great. First things first, let's take the dough out of these annoying plastic bags. And once it's out, we're gonna cut it in half. That'll give us two equal sized portions to work with. So grab a dough cutter and cut these in half. The dough is a little bit sticky, so if you have to use a little bit of flour, sprinkle some on top. All right, let's get into balling up this dough. First, make sure your hands are generously floured. This will help keep the dough from sticking. Now, take that dough ball and lightly press in, folding it into the center. The key here is to keep the seam side facing out while the smooth part faces toward your chest. After each press and fold, give the dough a little rotation. Grab the ends and press into the center again. We're going to do this about a dozen times. And each time we fold and press, we're creating just a little bit of tension, which is crucial for the dough's structure during fermentation. I'll ball up another one here so you can see exactly how I do it. So when you're done, you're going to place that smooth part into your palm and you're going to pinch that seam closed just like this. This tension is what's going to give us that beautiful airy crust when we bake it. And just like that, our dough is ready to rise. All right, next up, I'm going to lightly oil these two cup deli containers. The oil will prevent the dough from sticking to the sides of the containers. Place your dough in the deli's seam side down. Cover them up and let them rest for three or four hours at room temp. This is when the magic happens. About an hour before launch time, preheat your oven at 500 with your baking steel on the top rack. I'm lucky I have two today. All right, it's time to stretch out the dough. Generously flour your work surface. All right, place your dough in the center and gently coat each side with flour. All right, now we're gonna lightly press onto the dough. It's gonna feel like a cloud. It's beautiful. So be careful not to press too much on those outer edges. I'm trying to preserve the edge with a little bit of thickness to create that really nice crust. And the, the edge is often referred to as the cornicone. It'll puff up beautifully when baked on steel. Now we're gonna pick up that dough and do a gravity stretch. And just like a steering wheel, just make sure your knuckles are tucked under and just rotate this pizza, give it a little shake, let gravity do its thing. The gravity stretch helps maintain that consistency in the dough. And if you feel like it, give it a little toss. All right, now let's grab our wooden peel and dust it with flour and semolina flour and brush it around. Those will be your ball bearings. Place your dough on top, give those edges a little pinch, and then make sure your dough is going to slide like a hockey puck on top of the flour. All right, let's sauce it up. Place a couple of spoonfuls in the center of your pizza and let's distribute it close to the edge, but not over the edge, just like life. Next, let's add some cheese. I'm using a low moisture mozzarella and a fontina cheese. I grate it right on top. All right, let's take a top view. I'm gonna sneak on some fresh mozzarella. All right, let's go in the oven. Remember the back of the peel to the back of the steel and gently shuffle it off. All right, after two minutes, open the oven up and rotate the pizza 180 degrees. Bake for two more minutes and remove. It's beautiful. And let's take a look underneath. Ah, that crust is gorgeous. Slice and serve and enjoy with someone that you love.